Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be sharing an end of the year review for my third grader. This is all of her independent subjects, so subjects that were just catered to her specific grade. I also have things that we did together as a family and a group, and that will be in a separate video, so look for that soon if it hasn't already come out. Um, so let's get started right away. First, we have language arts. This is from The Good and the Beautiful. This is level three language arts, and it comes with, it includes in the whole curriculum, phonics, writing, reading, grammar, and punctuation, spelling, literature, geography, art. She loves, loves The Good and the Beautiful. She has done it pretty much since preschool, um, with the exception of one year in uh, kindergarten. She did a Becca, and we tried it in first grade, and she, she did not like it. She we went back to the good and the beautiful and she has loved it ever since. She never gives me a hard time about doing her language. What she really likes about this is that it has all of the lessons are different every single day. It's not the same thing. Um, the, the course book is fun and interesting and good for young children. It's a teacher guide right in, right built in and so it has the lesson plus the lesson practice. It has grammar, like I said. It also has, um, there were some book reports in there. There was writing to do, journaling, there's poetry, there's always art, as the good and the beautiful is well known for incorporating art throughout all of its subjects as well. Diagramming, here's geography. They just have everything in here um, and more. <laughs> and so like they are talking about the McGuffey readers. So I could see how some people would say it's just a little bit all over the place for me. I want it to be a little bit more succinct. I want it just to be like, let's do a chapter on nouns and then let's add the chapter on verbs. So I totally understand that this is not going to be for everybody. Um, my older two didn't really like the good and the beautiful. It was okay for them, but they preferred like just a specific, like a, like a traditional grammar. Um, but she is my uh, artsy person. She's my art girl. And so she likes that it's different every single day and that it has uh, diff different aspects to it. Coordinating conjunctions, some more artwork there. So again, it's going to cover such a wide variety of different topics. Her writing has come a long way over the last year. And so um, she enjoys this. It also comes with a spelling practice book. Now their spelling is not like a traditional, here's a list of 20 words, and then you take a test at the end of the week. It's Their units are divided up, um, the book is divided up into four units, and each unit is going to have a certain amount of spelling words. And they're not, um, they're usually like exceptions to the rules. And so they're really focusing on spelling those like 10 to 12 words really well for that for that unit, those like eight to nine weeks. And so they're not just practicing those words every single day. There's different spelling exercises here. It's teaching spelling rules on top. So it's not just arbitrary spelling words. It's going to teach, it's going to really reinforce that um, as well as teaching some grammar or I'm sorry, some phonics aspects. E A E R A W O W, working on um, spelling things out loud, working on sentence dictation. What she looks forward to every single day is they have a little riddle. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. <laughs> There's a little riddle on the front page, and then you turn the page over and it tells you the answer to the riddle. So she asks me the riddle every single day, and sometimes I actually guess them, which I'm never good at riddles, but. I don't know if that's saying too much that I'm able to guess third grade riddles, but hey, I will take it. Okay, and then it comes with books, read alouds. Um, these, if you're like, I don't know, should I get them, should I not? It's up to you, really. These, so the, they're well done. They're good quality books. It's good, wholesome literature. Uh, they're supposed to be done with the parent and the student together. And there's also practice, there's phonics practice in it. So there's there's nothing wrong with these. It's absolutely fine. So you'll have at the beginning of the chapter, a whole page of phonics, and then you'll have a student page to read, and then a parent page to read, and student parent go back and forth in their chapter books. There were a couple like book reports that you had to do from this chapter from in here. So they could be skipped or it could just be doing a book report on another chapter book that you read or another story that you read. I don't think these are necessarily, in other words, like you're not going to have major gaps in your curriculum if you don't get these, but they're good to have. Um, so it's t Journey of Five, which she's reading that now. She's supposed to be reading that. I don't, I don't know why that's down here. Um, the Kingdom of Kind, 
and Timothy of the 10th floor. And then there's a fourth one called Heather in the Highland Pony. Now she really loved this Timothy of the 10th floor. And so she's going to get, I got her the series that goes along with it, the Badger Hills Farm series from the Good and the Beautiful. She liked these, they were pretty good. She didn't like rant and rave about them, but she really liked this one the best. So that is her language arts. I guess this could be considered language arts too, but not really. So handwriting is the good and the beautiful level four. She is, yes, she's in third grade, but she did level four um, because I started her in level three last year in second grade to, so she could start doing cursive. And that's just where their, um, where their cursive starts is in level three. So she did that last year. She's in level four now and she really likes it. It's one of her favorites her favorite curriculum as you can see so it has a manuscript and then it has you know a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun and then it also has cursive and it always has like a copy of the picture add this to the picture there's always some sort of art that they are doing and so she really enjoys that um this does have christian sayings in them like i will be kind by god what oh <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, that confused me for a second. It said, finish the sentence, and the sentence was, I will be kind by, and you're supposed to fill in the blank. She put God. I, I must have missed that the first time I saw that. Anyway, as you can see, so there's definitely different uh, art aspects to it. It's a good mix of manuscript and cursive, but they're definitely doing a lot more cursive this year than they were the last year, and they're getting pretty proficient in it. So she really, really loves the Good and the Beautiful's handwriting. I wouldn't change it or anything. She's going to be, she's gonna do that um, till she's finished with it. Next we have for math, we have Math 2 from The Good and the Beautiful. Now, I made a video a couple years ago. We've always used The Good and the Beautiful math, preface that by saying that for like, I think since my oldest was in like first grade. So when it first came out, like in first, first kindergarten, first grade, something like that, she used it and now she's going into eighth grade. So we always use the math until it stopped working for us a couple years ago when she was in fifth grade and my daughter was in first grade and I made a whole video on it. So, but I feel like I have to preface this by saying that because it has lots of views and, um, and I still stand behind, especially for fifth grade, what I said, and I still do stand behind what I said for first grade. And I even made a video last year, like, oh, I'm eating my words because we're using them again. And like, I'll be the first one to admit, you know, that doesn't make sense that you made a video and now you're going back to use it. But we all live, we all learn. And this isn't my favorite curriculum, but she really likes it. And she doesn't give me a hard time with it. We tried a couple other things like um, the old good and the beautiful math. And I've tried a couple other things, just trial here and there. I didn't really share it on my YouTube, but just like things that I've had, like uh, old Becca books that I've had. I've like printed out samples and things like that to use. You know how sometimes you can do sample lessons and it just, I just kept getting pushed back. And this is like the only thing that she didn't give me a hard time on and she gets it and she's learning math. So I'm like, you know what? Sometimes you just have to do what's going to work best for the kid, which I always say that and always recommend that. Um, I would never tell anyone, you're not allowed to use this. This is terrible. Go throw it in the trash. No, definitely not. But um, this isn't going to work well for everybody, but it really worked well for her. The, it still didn't work out for my older daughter. She's said goodbye and never looked back, but she likes this. So we finished this. It, she did well with it. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't seen that video, just forget everything I said and just, it doesn't really matter. What I'm saying is for the good and the beautiful, again, it's with, it's kind of like their language, like it's different every, this is a little bit more set up similarly, but uh, so it's gonna have a mental math, like an out loud practice that they're gonna be doing every day, like skip counting or tell me the time or um, how do you spell 19, you know, things like that. And then there's gonna be the lesson that they have and then there's going to be, and you're gonna work on it together. So the teacher guide, the teacher instruction is in with, with the lesson. And then they're going to be doing independent review on their own. And it's things that they've already learned before. Uh, so let's get a little bit further into it. Um, they also have assessments, just happened to land on this. They have an, a test and assessment to see how they did for that unit and it's a couple pages long. There's only like four in the entire book, so it's not like a test every single week or something like that. So again, skip counting, they're doing that, and then here's the lesson. 
Here's the activity and it comes with a math box with like manipulatives and things like that as well. Here's the independent practice that goes along with it. So there's a little bit of a variety. It's not too much, it's not too overwhelming or anything like that. And then they have every once in a while logic things like how to use your, we, I usually had to help her with these a little bit, but she got a little bit better towards the end of the year. So they are meant to be done independently, but not necessarily. Um, so that's kind of how the day, how the lessons are all going to be laid out. They're all going to look pretty similarly. Um, they're all going to have starting this little thing that you do together, like a warm up, a lesson with practice, and then an independent page. And they're all going to be two to three pages. So they're not too long, not too overwhelming. Again, she's in third grade. She just finished this up. So towards the end of the year, it was getting a little bit too easy for her. Uh, but that's okay. I'd rather, I don't know, I'd rather it be a little bit on the easier, lighter side than like throwing everything and overwhelming her. Because then you can do these cool quickly and then kind of catch up, so to speak, uh, as you need to. Sorry for that very long um, explanation. I just feel like I had to kind of explain why I'm doing what and why I seem to be contradicting myself. And I hope that that makes sense to you. And then she's also doing Spanish at co-op. So I can't really speak too much for this actual book. It's a, uh, just like a Spanish workbook, as the name implies. Spanish elementary so um, she likes it okay she uh, again she has a once a week class and then they go over things and play games and things like that and then she's got some homework in here nothing too overwhelming or anything like that I hope you can see that okay it's just general things like food and um, transportation and things like that so there's different exercises I'm not sure how you would do this on your own, um, unless you just wanted your children to learn like vocabulary terms. I feel like this would be need a little bit uh, to be fleshed out a little bit and have some more meat to it. But I don't know if you if you already have a program, you just want your children to work on vocabulary terms. I feel like that would be good. But again, she's doing it with co-op. So she's getting a lesson and things like that once a week. Okay, and then last week we have uh, science and she, is, she did botany with apologia exploring creation with botany the first half of the year and then or no I'm sorry she's doing that right now and then she did land animals of the sixth day the first half of the year and then she's finishing up with this she's almost finished now these are pretty good sized books they could be done in either half of the year or an entire year they're by Apologia and so they do have journals to go with it but Again, she's doing this with co-op. So the co-op did not require the student journal to go along with it. They had their own like worksheet pages that they did. So she listens to this because they have this on audio. So you can get like an MP3 or a CD. My friend told me that they have them through our local library. So you might wanna check out your local library to see if they have the books on audio. So I just checked them out for my library. We listen to it. She listens to the whole chapter, if, if it's not too long, sometimes some of them are like an hour. Some of these were very long. Uh, these are a little bit shorter chapters for the botany. Um, she would listen to it and then answer the questions. So, uh, but if you are doing this at home for yourself, these are do done very, very well. A lot of apology is a very popular book, especially among homeschoolers. I probably personally wouldn't choose this for ourselves just because it goes into so much detail and it is very textbooky um, they do have activities and um, experiments and all that built in so it is activity rich and again you do have the notebook that you can go along with to do questions and they have um, fun things in there as well just from the samples that i've seen but she likes it okay she said it's kind of a little bit hard, which I get because it goes into excruciating detail for I feel like second graders or third graders. It's for elementary, I feel like this is a lot, but a lot of people really like it and she is doing well and she is learning and does remember a lot of what she listened to, but I just feel like it is a lot sometimes. So you might want to, if you did this, especially if you have younger kids and they're really interested in botany and they wanna learn about it for a whole year, maybe take your time and do it throughout the whole year, it's up to you. Or you could do, like I said, one per semester. And then for like her extracurricular, she's still doing uh, piano lessons with my mom. My mom uh, is pretty good at the piano and so she's been playing for years. And so she teaches her and Lexi, who's in fifth grade, 
a piano lessons once a week. And then Lola this spring has been her first year with softball. So she uh, is on our just local rec team. And so she's doing really, really good at it. She's very confident out there and she just goes up and swings and hits away. So she's really enjoying softball. And then again, we're doing co-op and then she does Awana's every Wednesday night, uh, which is like a Bible uh, club where she memorizes verses and plays games and uh, it's a Bible lesson and things like that. So that's once a week as well. She loves art. She's my little artist. So a lot of times during our morning time, like when we're having our group subjects, our read alouds, things like that, she will just spend her time drawing. She loves to draw Pokemon and dragons and she just really enjoys working on that. Sometimes she'll go on YouTube or she did um, Sparketh, which I've shared before in the past, which was online art classes from different art professionals and there was all different types of art that they could do. So she's really enjoyed that. And then for like history, read alouds, um, we've done critical thinking and poetry and, and music appreciation and all of that. We do that again with our Re with our morning time, our group subjects, and we do that all together as a family. So I'll be sharing those in a separate video. So this isn't everything she's done. It's again, just things that are geared to her level, things that we do all together. I'll be sharing, look for that video to come out soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and that you're able to get a little bit of a better idea of whether you would want to use this for your child or not. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments and I will see you soon. Bye guys.